I wanted to share some things with you today about uh, trichinosis in uh, wild game meat and in pork. Um, interestingly, I was in a store the other day, a restaurant, and I was getting some uh, used fryer oil for bear baiting. And uh, the guy in there um, is a real nice guy, but he just said, you know, I'm really opposed to bear hunting because you can't eat them. And I said, well, I wish I'd have known that before I ate 29 of them or more because I've killed 29 bears and uh, uh, I've eaten bears that other people have shot too. And he says, well, they have a worm or something like that that makes it so you can't eat them. And I thought that was kind of surprising coming from a guy that's working in a restaurant. But anyway, he said, uh, I mean, he was referring to trichinosis and he didn't know much detail about trichinosis, but... Um, I just thought that's kind of a really common uh, belief that a lot of people think that you can't eat bears and uh, maybe the trichinosis part of it is one of the reasons why people believe that. So let's talk a little bit about trichinosis and, um, and how, uh, you know, how it works, I guess, and uh, how you can protect yourself. So uh, trichinosis is fairly common in bears in some areas, uh, particularly northern Canadian wilderness areas. It's more common. Um, of course, not all bears have it, but uh, uh, it's also somewhat common in wild hogs. Uh, it's, it, it, it's rare now in pork um, because it's pretty much not quite, it's not been eliminated, but it's, uh, it's fairly rare in pork now. Um, it would be more common in uh, farm-raised, uh, you know, I guess, you know, your, your kind of free-range pork, organic, people would call it organic pork, um, but the, uh, the pork that's raised in uh, hog confinements and so forth is primarily trichinosis-free. Um, so, but wild hogs can have it. It's also been found in horses and dogs, which is pretty interesting. Um, but let's, let's just talk about the wild game here, the wild hogs and the bears. Um, the way that uh, trichinella works, uh, the trichinella is a parasite and uh, it burrows into the muscle tissue and, and it is a tiny little cyst. It's just a microscopic little cyst that lays in the muscle tissue and um, it uh, can be freed from that cyst it's a kind of a calcified covering on it that protects it and it can last for a long time um, it can you know it survives hibernation and everything but uh, what frees it is stomach acid so when something eats that meat then it frees the trichinella which then can uh, reproduce inside the system and then burrow into the meat of the new host so there's a couple ways that the trichinella is killed. You know, it, there are people that have gotten trichinella, and it's extremely rare for people to get trichinosis. You know, I mean, there's, you know, probably, I'm going to say there's left, less than 50 cases a year in North America. Um, that's a guess. Maybe, you know, maybe 60 or so, and uh, probably over half of those are from wild game meat, bears, or hogs that have been undercooked. Uh, there's two ways to kill the trichinella parasite. Uh, number one is if it's frozen for zero to five degrees roughly for 20 days, that kills it. Um, so, you know, if your chest freezer and you got a bear in there um, and it goes down to five degrees or less uh, and it's there for 20 days, it kills the trichinella. Uh, the other way is that it dies when it reaches 137 degrees so any um, you know 137 degrees is pretty medium rare I guess you would say but I don't I don't want to take chances on that I cook all pork and bear to 160 degrees and uh, that you know then you know that it's it's killed and um, so that's the best way to do it now I do a lot of things with bear meat I make summer sausage and uh, I, I smoke the summer sausage, I set the smoker on 180, I smoke it for three hours. And uh, it's fantastic and I feel completely safe knowing that uh, if uh, the bear had trichinosis then uh, I won't get it. Um, I've made uh, jerky with bear meat and I set my 
uh, dryer, my dehydrator on 160 degrees and um, for the jerky. So that way I know it's safe. Uh, anytime I cook bear meat, um, you know, on the grill, I, I cook it uh, so it's brown all the way through. I just, uh, you know, I, I like my beef steaks medium rare, but uh, the, the bear meat, you want it to be uh, brown all the way through. And then, you know, it's, it's, you can use a temperature gauge if you like and get it at 160 degrees. Um, one of the best ways to cook bear is in a slow cooker with... I love it with uh, potatoes and onions and garlic and stuff like that. Man, it's really, really good that way. It's very tender. And the gravy, I put a few, two or three beef bouillon cubes in with the water when I'm cooking in a slow cooker. I should do a video on this because it's killer. And that makes fantastic gravy for potatoes and gravy and, uh, and uh, bear roast. So um, there's, there's other ways to cook bear. I make breakfast sausage with bear meat grind it up and uh, and fry it and I mix bacon in with it so that way I know that when I cook it I like to get it browned on the edges and it's cooked all the way through and um, it's safe so anyway that is the uh, that's the rundown on uh, trichinosis and what your danger level is if you cook all your bear meat to 160 degrees you don't have to worry about it at all you know 137 is what the Centers for Disease Control say that uh, it kills the trichinosis, but I, you know, for me personally, um, I just want to be on the safe side. So um, thanks for listening to this. I hope it helps you. And uh, if you have any other comments, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, I'd be happy to hear from you and, uh, and have some discussion about it. So um, don't be afraid to go out and shoot those bears and eat them. They're, they're very, very good eating.